Good evening, everyone. This is Essential Connections, week five of Essential Connections. I am Tia Whitley, um, a part of KBSA, Kalamazoo Behavior Specialist Association. And I am joined tonight with some phenomenal panelists who are going to discuss with us self-care and how self-care helps us with our own mental health. So this evening, we have Mr. Anthony Kimbro. He is a physical therapist assistant, as well as a personal trainer. Anthony, say hi to the people. Hello. <laughs> we also have Amber Walker. Amber Walker is a therapist um, she is also the owner of Healing in Color Counseling Services. Thank you, Amber, for being with us this evening. Good evening. And last but certainly not least, Miss Carmen James, the owner of Fit Bella B. She is a personal trainer, a certified personal trainer with a specialty in nutrition. Um, she has a wealth of knowledge as it relates to physical fitness and has the licenses to prove it. There's so many, we just can't name them all this evening, <laughs> but <laughs> this is Miss Carmen. Good evening. <laughs> all right, guys. So let's get into it. Self-care. Let's start by one, defining this thing called self-care. What is it? So I looked up the definition when I knew I was going to be having <laughs> this, uh, this opportunity to share. And according to the World Wide Web, um, self-care definition is the practice of taking action to preserve or improve one's own health and mm -hmm. a practice of taking an active role in protecting one's well-being and happiness, in particular during periods of stress. Mm, the internet might have got it almost right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so from your perspective as a therapist, uh, Amber, what's your take? Um, I would just add that we don't want to wait till we're in distress to do self-care, that this is something that needs to be continuous, something that we do on a daily basis. Um, again, it's attending to what it is that you need as an individual on several different levels, um, spiritually, mentally, physically, financially, emotionally, professionally, and socially would be the areas we would talk about in therapy. Wow, wow. So self-care covers a gamut of things within your life and, and how you, the things that you would do to protect those multiple areas within your life is, is what I'm hearing. So how do we do that? Do you need to see a therapist in order to find out how to care for yourself? How do you do that? Um, yes, you don't necessarily need to see a therapist, but there's nothing wrong with seeing a therapist. Um, a therapist can allow you to have a party that doesn't have any type of like emotional investment or personal investment, you know, in your family or what's happening, the non-judgment zone where you can hash all of this out. You can talk it out, think it out. Um, so going to therapy is fine, but if you have a group of wonderful individuals in your life that you trust, um, these are things that you can come together like we are tonight and just talk about, you know, with your group of friends or family. Absolutely. I know personally, um, Amber, I've been very transparent um, being uh, with my clients, um, even on News 3, that I've been in and out of therapy since I was 19 years old, and I'm proud of it. It's a part of my self-care and a part of um, this, I don't know, just I go to the doctor for any other thing. So I, 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 I am a true advocate for therapy. Um, but even some other things um, that I know that I utilize and others utilize is just um, living in gratitude every single day, putting forth an effort to um, highlight the things in your life that are going well, um, that are um, 
positive, especially, especially when you're down and out. Sometimes it's harder in those days. Um, but um, journaling um, this past week was kind of rough for me personally. And I was coloring, coloring in a coloring book. I, I've always loved to color. It's what I continue to do. That's outside of um, working out because um, sometimes when you have stress, I know my body sometimes takes on stress physically. So working out might actually set me over the edge. I actually have to maybe walk or do yoga or lay around in color or call a family friend or something like that um, so that I'm able to um, do some type of self-care to lift whatever it is I'm going through. But like Amber said, it's also about maintaining um, some type of routine where you're always putting self-care um, at the forefront, making sure it's a, it's a continuous priority so that um, sometimes those lows won't be as low possibly. Um, kind of like you were building a little reserve or, or an insurance policy to kind of help you out. You have anything to add to that, Anthony? Uh, no, they pretty much covered it all. <laughs> I mean, they, uh, they handle it pretty good. I, I can't add too much to that other than um, it's really just looking for balance in your life with your family, your love life, your, your health. And uh, wellness is really all you can do. But the two ladies covered it pretty thoroughly. So how do we do it, though? So is it just journaling? Is it, you mentioned Carmen, um, working out. Um, how do we know what works best for us and what we need to practice that self-care? I feel like it's mostly knowing who you are and uh, what's best in that moment. There, I don't think there's a specific thing that you can have for every, for every moment. You can't I feel like there will be something different depending on the situation and uh, what you have going on in life. So like for me, fitness is usually the go-to, but like Carmen said, what sometimes it's fitness, it can't be enough and you need something else to, uh, to fall back on when, when your main thing doesn't work. Yeah, I would, I would piggyback off what Anthony said and just say it, it's exploratory. You know, sometimes you have to you have to dig and figure out what is going to work. Sometimes, like Anthony said, like what worked before might not work this time. Um, so I think it you have to explore it and you have to reach out to people and resources that maybe can offer you um, some um, sound advice on some other skills or tools to use to try to explore some other things um, that might be helpful. Yeah, and sometimes it's easier to identify what is not working, especially if you are in distress, than to try to pinpoint like what is working. So we may start there and I may say like, what is not working for you right now? And so let's say that the example is that financially you feel really out of control. And so we may, you know, go from there. Okay, so what does make you feel safe financially? Um, being able to look at my bank account and things being, you know, in a place where I don't have to worry. Okay, so how do we get there? And so really, you know, taking some steps back, knowing, using what you do know to create a plan for what you may not know how to do. Mm, I like that. Using what you don't know to create a using, plan. No, using what you do know. What you do know to create a plan. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's awesome. So, so when it comes to us as, as um, let's just take families, for example, so parents. So when it comes to the parent, um, you in this virtual realm, right, um, doing the best that parents can with uh, caring for their children, the learning online, plus working from home or leaving, you know, the home to work. What are some tips that you would give to those families to um, practice some self-care in the home? Um, so I personally believe in mental health days for children. Um, you know, if you feel like they are distressed and not doing well, it is okay for them to have a mental health day. You know, they may not be 
physically sick, but if they are feeling depressed or if their behaviors are changing, or if you notice that they are just not able to focus and pay attention, you know, as a parent, it's okay for you to step in and advocate for what your child needs and say, you know what, let's take a break today. Um, and that doesn't mean that we can't do learning. We just do learning differently. So if we are working on money in school, um, if you feel safe going to the store and allowing them to pay, you know, with cash, like they're still learning the lesson. They just may not be in the school setting through Zoom, which can be daunting for us as adults and children too. Carmen, I think you're about to say something. Yeah, I would just say also make it a group effort, you know, like um, have a dance party in the living room, if that's something you and your kids enjoy doing, or go outside and have a snowball fight. It doesn't have to be conventional. It can be getting back to the basics of, of humanity and what we used to do. Um, also, you know, <laughs> I um, have a two-year-old, and um, some days when I need to just get away, I have to remind myself not to feel guilty to let him watch Coco Melon like four episodes while I take some time to myself. <laughs> while yeah. I take some time to myself. So moms out there in a, you know, whether you're in a relationship or you have support or not, like um, for you to be okay, you have to take some time to yourself and not feel guilty about it because everybody will be okay. The babies will be okay if they have more tech time. You know, we might have to undo some stuff later, but it's all about making sure that we put our own oxygen mask on first, because if we're no good and we're run down, we're not going to be around to take care of her. Mm, mm. So I would say make, make it a group effort and it does not have to be conventional. Even the exercise does not have to be your traditional exercise and concentrated. Um, have a family competition who can clean up their room the fastest, whoever cleans up their room the fastest gets $5 and blast the mess out of some music while you're doing it. Like, just, you know, in maybe name a day, like um, over here we have um, Fast Food Friday. So, you know, that's the one day where we can just allow ourselves to just, you know, get dinner out or something like that. So those would be some of my tips that I try to use. What about you, Anthony? You got some tips for us? <laughs> um, just going off what they said, I feel like disconnecting, having the kids disconnect from um, anything electronic for a while kind of um, helps them reset well, we've had to do that at our house a couple of times we're just like let's turn off everything let's go to let's all go go to the grocery store like the karma said a group thing like just get out the house breathe some real air see some people because they don't get to see many people but the ones in our home nowadays so just um having them out doing those things what i've i've had my little kids they'll they'll go out after school and since we've had so much snow lately I have them go outside and shovel the snow. And it seems, it sounds like a chore when I say it at first, when I come home and they're doing it, it's uh, they're out there having fun. They're out there longer than I would expect them to be. And nobody's angry about it. It just gives them the mm. physical activity. They're burning some energy and they're not staring at a screen for the time they're out there. So Carmen, you brought up something in your house. You do fast food Fridays. Um, and in mine is pizza Friday. Yeah, that's what we do. Oh. But you know, Pizza Friday can wear on you. Yeah. You change that. Mine is usually pizza, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, taking, I've had to learn myself to, okay, it's Pizza Friday. So, how do I switch it up so that I can enjoy, you know, Pizza Friday? You know, so if that is home cooked, you know, making pizza, you yeah. know, at home or something like that. Um, just as another example of how in that moment I have to protect me, you know, or my own self-care before I lose it and like, no, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So what you brought up, um, Amber, you brought up children, youth, students, right? It, you never really hear adults talk about children as it relates to self-care. When you think of self-care, it's like an adult thing, right? It, it's something that only adults do. So talk more about that. What, what is self-care as it relates to children, as it relates to the youth and the students um, within, within the community? 
Yeah, so really there is no change about what self-care is. Um, children are people and people need self-care. And so looking at it from that standpoint and just getting them introduced to the language of what they need in the moment. So I like asking, you know, my children, what do you need right now? What can I do for you? Um, how can I help you? Um, that way, so they can start to understand what it is that they need mentally, physically, and they can express that. So I have two children that are very touchy feely, and usually what they need right now is a hug. And so for me, I'm not a that much touchy feely person, but taking a deep breath and going in for the 15 minutes of cuddle time <laughs> is, you know, me you know, giving of myself, but also teaching them that, you know, it's okay to say right now, I really need a hug and allowing them to get that. So one, they're not searching in other places mm, to fulfill good. their needs through substances or people or shopping, you know what I mean? Like finding things to help generate those feel good feelings, but also, you know, teaching them that it's okay to be selfless and to give to others. That's good. Karma, did you have something to say to that? No, I think what she said about giving to others, I know um, firsthand, I just read something recently about self-care and healing and one of the, um, and Amber, you probably know research-based, but one of the ways to begin healing is about giving back. So even taking some time to make, you know, some Valentine's Day cards for a local um, uh, nursing home or, you know, doing some projects where you can give to other people is um, a part of self-care as well um, and something that you could do as a family, and especially in this entitled generation where everything is instantly gratified. Um, I think it's especially important for us to find creative ways to do things for other people, but not necessarily sacrifice our own self-care, but find self-care and enjoyment in it and teach that to our kids. Oh, that's good. That's awesome. How do we teach, how would you suggest that we teach um, students to, because what I also hear you talking about in self-care is being able to advocate for your needs, right? So how do we teach children or the youth about advocating for themselves in school, or in our home to where it is not deemed as disrespectful or, you know, those words of talking back, um, you know, or being rude, you know, any way we want to put it, but that it is them advocating for what they need in that moment, you know, but in advocacy in a safe way. So for me as a therapist who's worked in the school, I would say it's really up to the adults to hear what a child is saying underneath what is going on. So understanding that a behavior is not the child, that there is something, there's some thought, there's some emotion that is, you know, happening for that child and then they're acting out what they are feeling or what they are thinking, but that behavior is not them. Um, and so being able to listen. And so say we have James who's having a really bad day and he's just crying and crying. And you say the instead of saying like, ooh, he is really getting on my nerves and you know, allowing yourself to get worked up in your head, not out loud. Um, <laughs> but seeing James and understanding like who James is, okay, James is a really kind person and it's possible that he hadn't rested well or got enough to eat and so asking James what do you need right now like I believe that is the simplest question and children tend to be very honest what I need right now is my mom okay what is it that your mom does for you because right now she's at work and we can't you know disturb her at work she wants you to you know get your lesson in for the day and maybe James will say well you know my mom um, is kind to me and everybody is being mean to me today. I can be kind to you, James, right? And so, you know, starting there and just really hearing what is happening because a lot of times children haven't developed that language, that emotional intelligence to really tell you what is the matter 
you know, without acting out of behavior, it's easier to cry than it is to say, you know, people are being mean and I need kindness. Mm, mm. Does anybody have anything else to add to that? I will. Anthony, you, you have anything to add? You can go ahead. Okay. Um, I love what Amber said. And the reason being is because not all of the adults that are parents know how to teach their children how to advocate for themselves because sometimes it's something that they too struggle with. So that kind mm -hmm. of approach about teaching adults how to recognize a behavior and say, what are you feeling right now? You know, like she said, on the other hand, if we, we do assume that some adults are in a position to teach them, um, I was blessed with and fortunate with a mother that taught me how to self-advocate at a very early age um, because of her life experiences. And so she would always teach me, Carmen, you can, you can have a voice and you can speak up to your teachers without being disrespectful. So that means that you don't do it in front of all the other students. You, you set aside time and you walk up to the teacher one-on-one -on -one and you use I feel statement. It upsets me when. Um, so again, not every child, we can't assume that every, every adult is equipped with that emotional intelligence and with that, um, that um, same, you know, foundation. Um, so I do, I love what Amber said because it is, it is more inclusive. Um, but for those parents that, that maybe know, um, I would suggest that you teach them about I feel statements and just the appropriate way of doing it. Because Anthony, I personally know your children and a lot of them are very good with their voice. Yeah. <laughs> Let yeah, me go they, on uh, mute. They, uh, that was something that we had to learn later on because I wasn't that parent in the beginning or that kid who could express it. I, was, I wasn't a kid who was listened to very much when I was in school or even at home. It was just like, you're all right. Cut all that cut all that acting out out or get out of my classroom. You can stay at home for a couple of days. You know, so a lot of the suspensions when I was acting out back then. So um, as an early parent, you know, I had, we had two kids before I was, we had three kids by the time I was 21. So we, uh, there was a lot of learning of how to be a good parent and giving kids a, a safe place and space to express themselves and teaching them when it's okay and when it's not to and how to do those things. So uh, as Carmen was saying, for parents to parents or adults to know when to listen to a kid and for a kid to have the know-how how to express that, it's all, it's all very important for people to be educated on that. That's awesome. So what I hear you saying is that advocacy is important right? And it is not always that uh, our children are being disrespectful. Um, my daughter does not like to be uh, named on social media, right? And she has to approve what gets posted of her <laughs> on social media. And so, you know, I, we were talking about a project that she's going to be involved in, and I was talking to her like, hey, you know, your name may be included. And then she was like, well, okay, but it needs to be included this way. And we're just having this big discussion about how she feels about social media and, you know, that digital footprint. Now, this is like what she used, she's using, right? Her digital footprint and she should be able to protect her privacy and what is being put out about what's like. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, being able to take a step back and realize, like, wait a minute, she's telling me this mm -hmm. is what she needs, and it's not disrespectful, you know. And she was passionate, right? She was real passionate, and I'm like, mm -hmm. yep, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and just accepting what she is saying for a need of hers. And not that she was talking back or being disrespectful. And that I feel is something that, you know, we as adults need to work on is, is like yeah. you said, listening, listening yeah. to what is being said versus wondering if there's a malice intent, you know, be behind it. So thank you so much for that, you know, comment um, as, as a, what were you going to say? I was going to say, I just want to add that validating her feelings 
is another important step in that and acknowledging that, you know what, that sounds like you are, you know, creating a safe and brave space for yourself. And I appreciate, you know, you wanting to do that and understanding about your digital footprint. Like that's really important to make sure that they continue because they may sit, feel safe with you or another adult, but when you build them up, that confidence and that self-esteem allows them to go to another adult who may not feel so safe or they may not know to say, I know that I have support from my mom or my aunt and I'm going to be able to say this. Mm. Okay. Okay. That's good. I like that. Uh, validating feelings, right? And should we be doing that same thing as it relates to adults? What do you think about that, uh, uh, Carmen? Absolutely. I think that helps in any relationship at any age in terms of validation and, you know, paraphrasing, trying to gain an understanding so that people feel heard because people are more, um, more likely to be absor like absorb what you're saying and the communication is more um, reciprocated when um, people feel validated and people feel heard. So absolutely in any, in every relationship, I think that's very important. Um, yeah. Awesome. Now we have Anthony on here as the male <laughs> and our time is winding down. So Anthony, as the guy, right, uh, yeah. is there a difference? You know, you know, it's that that men are from Mars, women are from Venus kind of thing, right? Yeah, I know mm -hmm. that's old school, right? But <laughs> yeah. is there a difference as it relates to men when it comes to self-care and what it means and how to practice it? Or is this, it's, it's gender neutral? Um, I feel like the base of it is gender neutral, but obviously how you go about things is a bit different. I don't, I don't, I don't feel like it's a gender thing. It's just like um, almost more like a cultural type of thing where that's the difference in how to self-care. Mm. Um, but as far as most men that I know, it's hard to get to that point where self-care is even okay to do. Like you have to, you're almost taught like, you know, from my generation, it's a, that's the old thing, that's so old. It's a, you were taught to shut up and swallow, <laughs> so drive, drive through, you, know, you don't deal with a problem is a problem. You kick it off and go and keep on moving forward. You don't, you don't slow down and uh, reassess and take care of yourself. You just keep pounding the pavement until you get to where you're supposed to be going. So um, as, as men, you have to know when to slow down, when to, when to feel the problem and be able to find a way to do it, be, find a way to take care of it. Um, a lot of men I know aren't really for like uh, therapy and things like that or even talking about the, the issues they're going through. So they just keep it bottled up. They'll joke, they'll make a joke about it with amongst friends or whatnot. But you know, it's uh, you gotta have the good friend to be able to read between the lines and hear those things to uh, reach out and help you get to where, get to um, a better place. Yeah. I like that answer. Yeah, I like that answer too. Mm -hmm. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to not be okay. Um, yeah. yeah, a lot of men don't feel like it is. And I've been trying to, at least at least in my home and my close friend, you know, we talk about not being okay and mm -hmm. it being okay just to talk about it and realize the issue. Yeah, I even like what you said about not necessarily gender difference because as I was sitting here thinking like, um, my partner will play video games and I'll go work out until I don't feel good. You know what I mean? And, but I also know I have female friends that will play video games. So mm -hmm. while in my mind, I'm like, that's a guy thing, but it's not necessarily a guy thing. Because yeah. Anthony will go work out till he gets sick. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And then yeah. My, uh, my youngest daughter is on a video game just as much as the boys. So. See, that's, yeah. that's exactly my point. Because Mia is too. My, my youngest daughter is too. So, yeah, so yes, definitely. I liked that answer. And that was a good question to you. Oh, good. Good. So, so self-care 
therapy can be self care, right? Yeah. I feel like I feel like you have to know yourself, and sometimes you need a therapist or some an outside source to help you learn yourself before you can even go into self care. Yeah, but like Amber said, you you know, for some of us, like I lost my oldest daughter. And my best friend also lost a daughter and her mom lost her sister. So I had the two of them um, during that heavy year of grieving. Um, so I had a therapist leading up to the death. And then after the death, I used them as my sounding boards and my, my um, support. So Amber, I love as a therapist, you're telling people that you can find counsel in people that you're close with and that are safe people as well, because that's very true. Yeah, most people come to therapy once a week for an hour. So there's no way for us to be that continuous support. So building a support system, a healthy support system. Healthy, is a healthy is a key word. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very <laughs> important part of healing yeah. and you know, creating a therapeutic and peaceful life. I love it. I, lo I love it. And, and what's really important that I heard and what everybody has said is when you're finding those individuals to talk to for, for those individuals to know, like it made me check myself, right? To make sure that we are validating how people are saying that they feel and not being judgmental right? And, and giving them the space to be, you know, open without, again, that judgment, right? So that's awesome. So um, if you don't mind sharing, what are the ways that, uh, like one way, maybe some kind of out the box way that someone would have never, ever thought of, right? That you practice self-care. I watch anime and read manga, if anybody knows what that is. I love it. I've always loved comic books. Um, my fondest memories was going to Farmer Jack in Detroit and picking a comic book up at the cashier <laughs> station with my mom. So every week I had a super dope collection of comic books. I still have them. My husband and I read them, so. <laughs> Does he watch anime too, Amber? Um, no, that's just a me thing. I'm telling you to watch this anime all the time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't, I think my biggest one was coloring. Like I like to color and, um, I like to paint my nails. Um, sometimes I like to cook. I think that's, I think that's it. That's, I don't think it's real outside the box. I can't think of anything. Okay. Yeah, for me, it's just uh, I'm learning to just be. Like I, I sit down and watch a TV show or something like that. I was uh, before it was just like I just be more busy. I do more things. I work out more. I pick up more clients for training. So now I'm learning to just like stop filling up all my time. Just sit at home and watch these TV shows everybody's talking about because that was almost like a bragging thing. Like I don't even watch TV. I don't have time for that. But now. <laughs> I sit down, I made time for it. So. Anthony, I share that commonality with you. That's <laughs> <laughs> so busy. Yeah. But, oh, TV? What? Oh, okay. I got it. I don't watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm like, I can't wait to watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> mine is uh mine is baking or cook cooking in general but experimenting mm. you know not just cooking like going in the kitchen and trying something new and mm. then getting all excited and then calling uh my close people and be like this is what i made today and it tastes <laughs> like this or they hear me do my long drowned out like tabitha brown explanation <laughs> of what i have made and how they have to try it so uh that's my version of you know, self-care amongst a, a few other things, but um, it's important. And uh, we know that exercising self-care is important because it is important for the healing process. Um, and sometimes we don't even know that there's a healing that needs to take place, right? Um, but self-care helps us work through, you know, that and to be able to take care of ourselves because Carmen, just like you said, you had to put your mask on first, right? 
So it's a way to put your mask on first so that you can be able to care for others in the workplace, in your home, um, just being a servant to people, you mm -hmm. know, in general. And I love how we were able to discuss tonight about men and, and we have boys coming up, right? Um, who, who need to know the importance of that self-care and being able to advocate for themselves at such a young age, all youth of all ages, and mm -hmm. the, the importance surrounding knowing what you even need at the tender age of five <laughs> to, you know, be able to speak, you know, up for, you know, yourself. So thank you everyone for coming on. Is there any last word that you would have to say to our viewing audience about self-care and the connection between self-care and mental health? Don't wait until you are so burnt out that you are not able to function and your body is laid out. Listen for those signs and symptoms that come early, which may be like a headache or getting irritable um, and, and put in your self-care. If you feel like you haven't been doing that, um, if you get off track, just go back to it. This isn't a perfect system. Not a perfect system, yeah. What about you, Anthony? Uh, she said it all. It's just, uh, yeah, you don't, it's not a perfect system. You have to keep on going. Um, everybody falls off, but you got to get back up. That's where it's really at. You got to reset and keep on trying. Yeah, and just to add the other little element to my passion is um, allow yourself to, if you have a craving, eat some ice cream, but also understand that there is a tie between um, nutrition and mental health. And nutrition can have an effect on mental health, but it's bi-directional. So, you know, like I feel down, I want some ice cream, I eat ice cream, or um, I'm happy, I feel happy, I want to eat some ice cream. <laughs> like, <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> You know, and mental health can impact your food choices and food choices can impact your mental health. So um, just keep that in mind as well um, as uh, self-care. You're doing the self-care. Just try to do things that are going to be productive to your mm. mental health. So that would be, that would be my little last little tip. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Again, thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Amber. Thank you, Carmen for coming on this evening to discuss with us the importance of self-care. Well, everybody, that is it. We have finished up our fifth week of Essential Connections. Catch us next week, week six, for another Essential Connection about family fun and engagement. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night.